Hi, my name is Frank with Rick Motec. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the Real Gear GT Pro pedals. Uh, the GT Pro pedals currently come in two uh, variations the floor mounted GT Pro 3s and the suspended GT Pro 1s. In this video, we're going to talk about the floor mounted GT Pro 3s. So, let's talk a little bit about the different features that are on these pedals that make them unique and make them different from our GT Pro 1. Uh, hanging pedals. So biggest difference between our hanging pedals, our GT Pro 1 hanging pedals, is uh, these are obviously floor mounted. The brake pedal does have a higher brake pedal force uh, available on it, uh, up to about 200 pounds, and it could be adjusted down. Uh, it also has infinitely adjustable pedal firmness, uh, so there's two different methods of adjusting that, and we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, the gas pedal on this is a uh, Hall effect sensor, so there's no, no moving parts as far as the sensor is concerned. It's simply a magnet and a Hall effect sensor. The brake pedal is hydraulic. It does have brake fluid in the system, and the, uh, the reading of the brake pedal is all done by reading the pressure of the hydraulic fluid uh, that's in there. So some common questions that arise when uh, when you may receive the pedals is, uh, you'll notice the brake pedal itself has uh, a little bit of play. It has about a quarter inch uh, of play, maybe about uh, six to eight uh, millimeters of play. Uh, so this is because it's replicating the actual braking system in a race car. When your foot is removed off the pedal, uh, there's an internal relief valve in the cylinders that opens up to release the pressure from the braking system in order for the brakes to, to release as quickly as possible. When you get on the pedal, uh, that valve has to close before pressure can be built up. So this, uh, these few millimeters of play that it has is that valve closing. And so nothing really happens as far as braking until that valve is fully closed. Uh, beyond that point, braking is registered by pressure. You'll notice when you get the pedals that the brake pedal is very stiff. After the first few millimeters, uh, it's very, very hard to press the pedal. Um, in order to get the proper pedal feel, you will have to mount the pedals, be in a seated position, and press the pedals with your foot. These brakes do require a lot of leg to uh, press on the pedal, just like it would in a real race car. Uh, that could be adjusted uh, via some bushings that I'll get into in a moment, um, and the, uh, the maximum brake force can also be adjusted electronically via the control box. So these are the pedals as they come. Here they're shown fully assembled but when you receive them and you get them out of the box, uh, you'll have to do a few things to get them ready. First step would be to mount the slave cylinder. It comes loose in the box for shipping purposes, uh, but it's uh, simply removing the, the pre-attached screw and then securing it to the mounting plate that's provided with the pedals. Next thing that has to be done is the pedal faces need to be put on the pedals. Pedal faces can be uh, mounted at one of four different heights. Uh, you'll notice that there's four holes on the front, so two possible positions for the screws, but these holes are not centered on the face of the pedal, so you can rotate the pedal around, turn it upside down, and have an additional two different heights. So that provides the four different mounting heights for the pedal faces. Pedal faces also have three horizontal positions that they can be mounted to, uh, and so that gives you flexibility as far as the spacing of the pedals. And the pedals also include the traction faces that can be applied to the, uh, the front of the pedal pads. Uh, so they'll ship separately. You can put them on if you like. Uh, next thing you want to do when you're setting up the pedals is you want to cut the zip tie that secures the pedal, the brake pedal down. Uh, this is done to prevent air from getting into the hydraulic circuit. Lastly, you'll have to open the two fluid reservoirs and remove the rubber plunger or plastic stopper that's in there. Uh, that's also there to prevent fluid from spilling uh, out the vent holes during transit. Uh, you wanna be careful if you're gonna be turning the pedals upside down or leaning them on their side, you wanna leave those in there uh, until you're finished with that. But once the pedals are mounted and they're right side up, uh, you can go ahead and remove those. The pedals can then be mounted using the four mounting points that are at the bottom of the pedal frame. Those holes will accept 5 16 bolts or M8 bolts, uh, and you'll have to provide the length that's suitable to uh, whatever rig you're mounting it to. However, you can optionally purchase from us the aluminum pedal base, and this base will provide a heel area, it'll also provide threaded holes, and we will provide the correct bolts to mount the pedals 
uh, to the plate the way you see it here. The plate has four mounting points that were, will mount to the Logitech pedal mounting locations. So if you do have a standard industry standard rig that has mounting points for Logitech pedals, this plate will bolt directly to that. When you're ready to start using the pedals, the three individual pedal cables will connect to the back of the control box using the matching colors. Then the USB cable can be plugged into the PC. Nothing else is really needed if you're going to use the pedals the way they come out of the box. They've already been calibrated for testing on our test bench, so you're ready to use them by just plugging them in. Uh, something to be aware of is the switch that's on the front of the box. This is a program switch, not a power switch. So it's important uh, don't start flipping this switch if you don't know what you're doing because you can inadvertently put it into program mode and then start changing settings. Let's talk about the adjustments on the pedals. We'll start with the gas pedal. The gas pedal has two set screws and lock nuts on them to retain that position uh, to adjust the initial and the ending position of the gas pedal. So that can be adjusted within a reasonable range uh, to give you a shorter throw or a longer throw. Once that's done, the pedal will have to be recalibrated to the control box so that the control box uh, is aware of the new range of motion. The clutch pedal has a pedal stop adjustment, also with a set screw and a lock nut on it, and that will set the maximum position for the clutch. If you'd like to set the initial position of the clutch, then the connecting rod to the clutch pedal can be adjusted uh, to move the pedal either forward or backwards uh, as needed. Again, once these changes are done, it should be recalibrated to the control box so that the control box is aware of the new range of motion of the clutch. The brake pedal has the largest amount of adjustments uh, of all three pedals. Uh, the initial position can also be adjusted by uh, threading the connecting rods from the master cylinders in or out uh, to bring the pedal either closer or further away as needed. And then the firmness of the pedal can be adjusted in two different ways. Uh, the recommended way is by adjusting this threaded rod here. You'll see that there's a lock nut on the end that has to be loosened. And then once that's loosened, this complete threaded rod can be rotated clockwise or counterclockwise. And as you rotate it, it'll move it toward the clutch pedal or towards the gas pedal. The further it's moved toward the clutch pedal, the softer the brake pedal becomes. The more it's moved toward the gas pedal, the stiffer the pedal becomes. This is the recommended way to adjust the pedals because the urethane bushings that we ship original with the pedals uh, are strong enough to last for years and years under uh, thousands of compression cycles. However, if you'd like the pedal to be softer, we do have an optional brake tuning kit uh, that comes with several softer bushings. These bushings can easily be replaced and then uh, that will provide you a softer uh, brake pedal. The adjustment rod here at the base of the brake pedal arm can then be used to make that combination of bushings uh, feel firmer or feel softer. So uh, essentially you, can, you have infinite adjustability for the firmness of the brake pedal. And there you have it, the Real Gear GT Pro 3 pedals. Available on our website, and if you have any questions on them, you can email us, call us, or reach us through our online chat through our website. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thanks for watching.